I still remember my first therapist when many years ago, I was talking to her about my imposter syndrome. And then she said that, you know, Vasya, I'm 56 years old. I've been a therapist, a psychotherapist for about 30 years. And they invite me to give a presentation. And when I know, even though I master the topic, I know it very well. When I know that in the audience, there's someone that used to be my lecturer, my professor, my teacher, when I know that they are sitting among the people in the audience, I just want to hide in my room and not get out of there forever. I feel like I'm so incompetent and people will realize that even 30 years later, I know nothing about my topic. And I looked at her and I was like, what? You? Do you feel like that? Because I feel like that, but I am still young. I'm at the beginning of my career. You feel like that? Yes. Here we are today talking about imposter syndrome and how it's not a matter of age or a matter of skills. Hi, I'm Vasi Sarandipulu. I'm a psychologist. And we are here in order to understand how concepts such as perfectionism, imposter syndrome, contribute to our mental health and contribute actually in a negative way eh? and how we can reverse that. So today we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is the feeling that even though we have succeeded, we have achieved a goal, we don't deserve that success. It's the feeling that we have been accepted in a position and still we don't belong in there. It's the feeling that sooner or later, somebody will expose the real truth that we are a fraud, that we don't actually have the skills and the competencies that we promote to others that we have. We're going to talk about more about imposter in another video, but if you want to understand whether you're struggling with imposter, imposter syndrome, I'm creating this video for you so that we can go through the signs of imposter syndrome and see whether that's your case. So let's start with the first one, extreme lack of self-confidence. We really don't believe that we are smart, that we are competent, that we are successful, that we are knowledgeable. Keep the word extreme, eh? because all of us, more or less, we struggle with our confidence, self-confidence sometimes. I'm talking about extreme lack of self-confidence to the degree that sometimes we feel like we want to hide. We want to hide ourselves from the world out there. We don't think that we have anything valuable, anything useful for the world out there. These strong feelings of inadequacy, they are so strong that they actually contribute into self-sabotage. We do self-sabotage. We don't even apply for positions, job postings, unless we meet all requirements. We don't accept any praise or recognition from others. We actually reverse that. We actually attribute success to external factors. We actually minimize our success. When somebody says, wow, look at what you've done. Well, that was okay. Not so difficult. And I didn't do it by myself. I also had some help. So immediately we minimize it. We make it smaller, not important. And that's how we show to the other people that we have these strong feelings of inadequacy. Another thing that you probably do if you are struggling with imposter syndrome is that you're constantly comparing yourself with others. And I'm not talking about the motivating side of comparison. I'm talking about the discouraging side of comparison. I'm talking about you're comparing yourself with others and you find yourself all the time less, less smart, less important, less successful, less knowledgeable, less competent, less, less, less. So constant comparisons. There's always somebody who's doing it better. There's always somebody who has done it faster. There's always somebody who has started earlier. There's always somebody who's going to be more successful than you. At the end of the day, you see how we're compiling negative thought over negative thought. You see how we're bombarding our brain with negative thoughts. And that's another sign of an imposter syndrome. The negative self-talk. 
we always talk to ourselves in a negative way. We always find something fault in us. Anxiety, of course, a lot of self-doubt. We don't believe that we're going to make it. Again, leading to self-sabotage. Why would I start something? Why would I start my blog? Why would I start my business? Why would I change to a new job? Why would I relocate to a new country? Why would I do that? It's going to fail. I don't trust myself that I'm going to make it. That's a self-doubt feature of imposter. Dwelling on the past and being afraid of the future. That's the relationship we have with the past and the future. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why didn't I know better? Dwelling on the past and having regrets about the past and being scared about the future. What if this happens? What if the worst case scenario? What if everything goes opposite to the plan? What if, what if? Do you see any motivation in there? No. Do you see any self-trust in there? No. How could somebody move the slightest centimeter, millimeter, with such heavy fears and negative thoughts about themselves, their past, their future, their present. It's impossible. It's so difficult, not impossible, it's so difficult. But it seems impossible to an imposter, to somebody who feels like an imposter. Another sign of an imposter is that not only you don't believe that you're worthy, you deserve, you're capable, but also you are overcompensating for this feeling of inadequacy. What does it mean? You take extra work. You say yes to everything. Oh yeah, people pleasing goes together with that. You take as many projects as possible. You overwork yourself. You work after working hours. You work in the weekends because the vehicle that drives all that is... I am not enough. I am a fraud. And now that I said I am not enough, you see how perfectionism and imposter syndrome, they're like twin brothers and sisters, right? Two different sides of the same coin. So you take extra work. You're overachieving. You want to present tangible results all the time. And another thing that happens is that when you succeed in something, you just shrug off any accolade well. That was not important. It was somebody else's contribution. Actually, I just managed the team. I didn't do something. I didn't do the work even. Do you see a lot of external locus of control in imposter syndrome? You see people attributing their success to external factors, circumstances, faith, luck, the weather, whatever, you name it. While people with internal locus of control, they can see their own contribution they can see that they were an important member of the team effort, for example. They see how their efforts and their skills attributed to the final result. So that's the internal locus of control, which is very low on somebody who struggles with imposter syndrome. For them, it's all about external factors. Another thing and last thing, what they're doing is that they are seeking for constant validation and constant feedback. And it makes sense because for somebody who struggles with imposter syndrome, there's not so much self-acceptance. There's not so much, as we said, self-esteem, self-worth. They don't believe in that. So of course, they are compensating by looking for validation and feedback and recognition from others. But again, that doesn't stick for a long time. After a while, that fades away as well because there's no anchor to our real worth. We don't really believe it. We just feel happy for a short time and then we just forget it because there's no one, there's no fertile ground that this positive recognition will get rooted. So how many of these do you recognize? How many of these signs of imposter syndrome? Let me know and then let's continue that conversation. The imposter syndrome has a very strong connection with perfectionism. And we're here to understand more of that side, not because we want to collect another thing that goes wrong with us, not at all, but because by acquiring, by, by having more, more awareness, we are starting taking care of our mental health. We're starting to protect our mental health. We're recognizing where anxiety stems from. And awareness is the first step. We cannot do anything if we don't have awareness. 
once we know it, once we know the enemy, then we can find the tools and the techniques in order to reverse that, in order to start taking care of our mental health. Let me know your comments. How many of these imposter syndrome signs you have? Let me know your experience with imposter syndrome, right? I'm the first one that I can also admit imposter syndrome. I always battle with that. And I always think that Ooh, one day people will see the truth behind my abilities, for example. But it's always there. So first one here, looking forward to hearing more from you, comments, questions, and let's continue that conversation. Have a good day and take good care of yourself.